Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm going to be doing a video that has been requested many, many times in the comments of my Sheep Shaver videos. And that is, how do you get games and applications into macOS once you've installed it in Sheep Shaver? I've been asked this many, many times by now, so I might as well go ahead and address it. So as you can see here, I have my Sheep Shaver installation fired up, and if you don't know how to do that, then you might as well check out my first two videos that I ever made about how to install macOS and Sheep Shaver. So go and check those out if you don't already know how, and let's get started. So there are a lot of different ways and different file formats that are often used for Mac applications that you find on the internet. And these are often found on abandonware sites such as Macintosh repository that I'm using here. And I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description. So if you want to check that out, follow the link and you'll be able to find a bunch of Mac software here on this website. And there, there are a bunch of different formats that people use when they're saving this stuff and uploading it to Macintosh repository. So it's important to know how to open each one of them in Sheep Shaver. So that's what I hope to show you here. So I've got several applications and games here that we're going to mess with and get running on Sheep Shaver so that you can see all, or most, at least most of the different file formats and ways that people package these files in order to run them in Sheep Shaver. So the four applications that we're going to be looking at are Fetch, which is an FTP client. It's not really going to do as much good in a Sheep Shaver installation because I don't really see any reason why you would need to use FTP there, but it's just for a proof of concept, so it doesn't really matter that it's not going to do anything. And then our next thing is Full Tilt Pinball, and you're probably familiar with this if you ever use Windows XP, because the Space Cadet Pinball game that came with XP is part of this Full Tilt package, so we're going to be trying to install that as well. Now the third thing is Tetris Max, which is, as the name implies, a Tetris game. This is a little bit older. This was made in 1993, but it, it still runs in Mac OS 9, so we can give it a shot. And then the fourth piece of software here is Microsoft Office 98. This is just plain old Microsoft Office, and we're going to try and get it running on Mac OS 9. And then you might have noticed I had a fifth tab over here as well. And... Um, while we are going to be installing this on the Sheep Shaver installation, this is just a supplemental utility that we're going to use to get one of the other programs running, but we're going to have to install it as well, so I might as well include it on the list too. So now, let's look at the files and get started. So I've opened up my downloads folder now, and now we can see the five different applications that we're going to get running in Sheep Shaver. And you'll notice that four of them have an extension of .sit. This is a Stuff It Expander file, and these will be expanded for us when we put them into Sheep Shaver in Mac OS 9. And then you can see the fifth file here for Office 98, it's a zip file. And I would recommend extracting any zip files that you have before you try and put them into Sheep Shaver, because Mac OS 9 and Mac OS 8, they don't come with a built-in zip file extractor. So I would go ahead and extract that now, which is what I'm doing right here. And now I can see that leaves us with a toast image, which we will deal with in a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this because we don't need the zip anymore. So now that we've got that done and we've extracted the zip, now we can go ahead and switch over to Sheep Shaver and copy all of these over to the Sheep Shaver hard disk. So as you can see here, I've made the Sheep Shaver window a bit larger than it was before so that you can better see what I'm doing. But otherwise, this is just a plain vanilla Sheep Shaver Mac OS 9 installation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to copy these files that we just downloaded from our downloads folder over to our Mac OS 9 hard disk. And you can see here in Sheep Shaver that we have two hard disks mounted. We have the Mac OS 9 disk, which is the disk that's running Mac OS 9, of course. And then we also have this disk labeled Unix. And this disk here is actually the hard drive of our real Mac that we're running this on. And if you're doing this on a PC instead, it will come up as this PC, and then you're going to want to click on that, and then choose the folder entitled C to select your C drive. But we're going to want to go into this Unix drive here, and then we're going to want to find our user folder so that we can access our downloads. So to do that, we're going to go into Users, and then this is my user account, AlexTheCat123, so we're going to go in there. 
And now I'm going to scroll to the downloads folder, which is right here, and we can go into that. And now, as you can see, all those files we downloaded are located right here. So now all we have to do is open up the Mac OS 9 hard drive. And I'm going to make this window a little bit larger so that we can see what we're doing. And now I can just highlight all of this and drag everything over to the Mac OS 9 hard disk. And it will take a minute for these to copy, but it shouldn't be too bad. All right, so now that everything's copied over, you can see there are only four here instead of five. And that's because Mac OS likes doing this really annoying thing sometimes where it will place one of the files really far away from the others. So as you can see here, our scroll bars have gotten really tiny. So we're going to have to scroll all the way to the very end of their range. And there it is. There's that file that it put up there for some reason. I really don't understand why it put it there, but I'm just going to leave it for now. And now that everything's copied over, we can start looking at these files. So any file with a .sit extension, we can just double click on it and it will open and stuff it expander and it will be expanded into the application that we want. So I'm going to start with fetch. So I just double click the file and there it is, stuff it expander opens and it just unstuffed the fetch sit file into this fetch directory here, which contains the program. So I'm just going to drag this to our desktop to show that we have completed it. And now we can go in and we should just be able to run the program. And look at that, there, it works. We're not really going to be able to do much with it because we don't have an internet connection here, so we can't really do any FTP stuff, but the program does indeed open and that proves that this works. So now I'm just going to quit out of that and we can close the fetch folder. And now we can move on to another one of these SIT files that's a little bit more complex. So let's do Tetris Max next. So this SIT file, we can just double click it, it will expand. And then the shrink wrap engine has reported an error. So stuff at Expander is complaining about something. It does this sometimes. And to be honest, I'm not completely sure why, but it, everything seems to work fine and whenever it does this the files never corrupted or anything so I'm not really sure why but we can just hit OK and now we can see that Tetris Max expanded to this Tetris Max.img file and now this right here is a floppy disk image so this floppy disk image here contains our Tetris program so we're going to have to do one more step in order to actually access the application we're going to have to double click on this floppy image in order to mount it and now the image is mounted, we can see it here on our desktop. And now if we just open this, we can see that the program is right in here, Tetris Max. And I'm just going to copy this folder to our desktop for easy access. And now we can go in and we can test this program too and see if it works. So we just click on the application. And there it is. The screen is very small because it's not meant for high resolution screens like this one, but we can start a new game of Tetris and everything seems to work pretty well. I'm not completely sure what the controls are here, but the game obviously runs, so that's another success. So we can just quit out of that and move on to our next SIT file. So I can move Tetris Max up here since we have finished with that. And now let's move on to the full tilt pinball SIT file. So this one, we can double click it to extract the sit just like before. And this one's going to take a little while. As you can see, it's moving quite slowly. So I'm just going to stop the video right here and I'll come back when this has finished. Okay, so the full tilt sit file just finished extracting and annoyingly it placed the extracted file all the way down here for some reason. I'm not sure why it did that, but it did. So here we can see that it extracted to an ISO file which is a disk image and we can try double clicking on that to mount it it gives us this warning about it being locked which makes sense because it's a an image of a cd which would also be locked and read only so we can just hit ok but as you can see it can't find an application to open it so what we have to do here is we have to go into the utilities folder here in mac os and once we're in there we need to open disk copy which brings up this little window right here so now we can go back down 
to our full tilt sit file and we can just drag this over to disk copy and drop it right there and now disk copy will mount that image for us so we can see it mounted it right here so now we can go into that and we, oh okay this is the um, version of full tilt for windows apparently i'm not sure why it was on macintosh repository but it seems that this is the version for windows so we're not going to be able to run it on here but at least you get the point. This is how you would mount an ISO image that you found inside a SIP file. So now we can just move on to the next one. So our next example is this Toast image up here from Microsoft Office 98. So Toast was a program back in the 1990s that was used for creating disk images. And so this is a Toast disk image. And you, as you can see, if we try and open it with disk copy, it can't find out, it can't figure out what the file type is. So we're going to need to use a different program in order to mount this. And that is where the fifth thing that we downloaded, which was this virtual CD DVD application, that's where this comes in. So we just need to extract this zip file. And we get this directory here that we can open. And it gives us another disk image to mount. And then inside that disk image, we can click on it and we can see that we have a folder with a virtual CD DVD ROM utility. And now we can just go into that and we get the virtual CD DVD ROM utility application. So we just need to open this and we get this little window here and with mount image and save image. So we want to mount our toast image. So we can just click mount image and then go into our Mac OS 9 hard disk here. And then we just need to scroll until we find that toast image that we want to mount. And you can see that it is right here. So then we can just click open and it warrants us that it's locked once again. So that's fine in this case. So we can just click OK. And there it is. It has mounted the Office 98 installer. So now we can just go in here and test and see if this works by launching Microsoft Word, for instance. And it asks us for our name and organization. So I'll just type some random stuff. And now we have to enter a license key. And of course, we don't have that. So unfortunately, this is as far as we're going to be able to go with Office, but it proves that it works. And that's one thing that I do have to say about a lot of this old software. A lot of it is going to require a license key or it's going to do some sort of check to make sure that it's actually valid software that you purchase legitimately. So there's a chance that some of the files that you download off the internet aren't going to run on here because the software is going to detect that they're not legitimate or you're going to need a license key that you don't have. So just keep that in mind when you're downloading things. And also some programs just won't run on Mac OS 9 and SheepShaver due to bugs or incompatibilities. So just, just keep that in mind when you're downloading files and trying to do this. So to summarize, this video is basically just showing you how to copy files over from your computer to your Mac OS installation and Sheep Shaver, and then it has shown you how to extract those files so that you can actually use the applications contained inside. So to recap, for a SIP file, you just double click on the file and it will automatically extract to your hard disk for you. And then for an IMG file, which is a floppy disk image, you can just double click that and it will mount onto your desktop right here, and then you can just click on that in order to access the application. And then our third type of file is the ISO file for disk images. And in order to mount those, we open disk copy, which is found in the utilities folder, and drag the ISO file onto the disk copy window. And then it will mount just like a floppy disk, and you can open it and access the files in there. And the fourth method that we learned was for toast files, in which you use the virtual CD DVD ROM utility and click the mount image button and select your toast image in order to mount it onto your desktop and then you can open it just like you opened all of the other images so that's basically how you get applications installed on mac os and sheep shaver it's actually quite simple and straightforward once you understand how to do it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new and i'll see you next time